And so today for the Arsas Club, we're going to continue what we started last week, which was to talk about the upcoming um, GPOT 3.5.0 upgrades. Um, um, so Friday last week, around like 5 a.m., they um, the authors of GPOT uh, posted um, um, an announcement on their blog that introduced some of the changes for 3.5.0. That's the ones that we discussed last week. Um, but because they made a ton of changes, they are doing a series of blog posts. Um, so during the week, they added two more, um, one of them on Legends, another one on Axis. At the end of the Axis blog post, they said that they're working on a fourth one also. Um, so there's quite a bit of changes coming um, online. Um, and um, I'll admit that I'm, it's not super clear to me if some of these changes are going to be breaking things that, um, that um, happened in the past with your code. Right? Um, it's possible that, that some things could change um, if um, you expect that some functions to work some way. Now, from reading some of the two recent blog posts, at some point I mentioned that um, some things that used to work that um, they've changed for now have deprecation warnings. So they're giving users as well as package developers a bit of time to adjust to these changes. Um, so that's my impression overall that they've tried to avoid breaking, making breaking changes um, um, like immediately. They're giving us a bit of a time to, to adjust to them. Um, now, uh, um, I saw the announcement for the first blog post on Twitter. We, you know, we shared the video and stuff on, uh, that we made last week also on Twitter. And the author, uh, who's sure I can pronounce well, um, I'll, I'll, I, um, Matt, I think we can hear you, um, uh, was um, um, Taewoon Van, Van Den Brand. Uh, uh, Taeun replied uh, on Twitter. I was like, oh, you know how we talked about colors last time and I changed some colors to be purple, uh, orange, and blue. Um, this person liked, liked that comment. So they're, they're like, uh, they're keeping an eye open for feedback from the community, which is always great. Um, so if, uh, you know, you give it a try to uh, with um, to uh, ggplot 3.5.0 and you find things that maybe you find a bit confusing or things like that, there's just a reminder that you should always try to give them feedback um, and they do respond to it. Now, uh, since last week, um, I had to like restart everything on my computer. Um, and so at this point, if you install ggplot2 from a friend, you actually get version 3.5.0. A week ago, we, we were getting 3.4 point something. So I had to use the, the GitHub version. So if you get the latest version from CRAN, you're actually using this version now. Cool. So um, um, as a brief recap from last video or last week, um, the thing that they announced that they changed a lot is they rewrote all the guides. And so the guides are axes and legends, um, as well as some transformations to the data. And so we said like now you can have like gradients in the background or in your bars in different ways. You could also have different um, types of, of, um, of grid gradients. Um, these are defined by the grid package. Um, and so actually someone made a bit of fun about this image on Twitter. I was like, oh, now you can make Excel type of graphs with R. That's why they made a bit of fun there. And so uh, while that was maybe a, you know made in a in a comical way, uh, you'll I think the authors of Gplot to also recognize that some of the changes they're introducing um, are actually going to enable people to make uh, not the best type of graph. Um, and so you'll see that in a little bit with uh, with legends. So in legends, in the blog post about legends, um, um, they um, 
say like, okay, since they rewrote all the guides, it's not a surprise that they uh, then rewrote the functions, guide legend, guide color bar, guide color steps, and guide bins. Um, because they rewrote some things too, they've also tried to, um, they took this opportunity to try to simplify how you can do things with gplot2. For example, um, here they mentioned that in the past, there are four possible ways to set the horizontal justification of the legend text, and you could do it in five different functions. And now in towards the future, they want to have all of that in like a specific location. So um, I imagine that this is making their lives easier to, in terms of debugging code and testing code um, by making sure that uh, some things that you want to edit, you can only really do them in one location. It also makes uh, the life of, for users maybe a bit simpler if you know what to expect. Right? Um, a lot of the argument names that we're going to be looking at today are actually um, following a syntax from like object-oriented programming. Um, or if you're a Python user, um, like this idea that um, you have an object, you, uh, you type period, and then maybe you can access some property of that object. And so you'll see some argument names involve like two or three periods uh, at times. And so they get longer and longer, the more specific you want to control things inside of, inside of that. Um, boom. And so a lot of these things, now you can do them also on the team function. So um, by changing where some things are located, um, now, um, uh, I mean, the way they did that was by, by moving some things to the theme, theme function. So for example, now theme has the legend frame um, set of arguments, and that replaces a few arguments that existed in, in guide color bar. So in guide color bar, that's where you had like frame color, frame line width, frame line type. So now, now those are part of the theme. Um, and similar things, for example, with like theme axis uh, line, um, that replaces a few arguments that existed in, in guide beans from before. So they relocated a few things, a little bit of shuffling. And so um, how, um, how does this look like now? So, um, um, so in this code chunk, they load ggplot2, they're looking again at that MPG data set. And um, they make something that is a bit and interesting, which is um, they have a guide now for the shape, another guide for the color. The guides are actually different, right? So um, uh, like the color, they wanted to be a color bar and the shape, which just wanted to be a legend. Um, now you can control some things there on their like guide legend and guide color bar. For example, you could say like you want the text, the legend text, or the frame, the box around the legend, uh, to be in red. So they do that here for the shape and the color. So let's let's just show that version. Um, actually, because I don't need to see it. Awesome. Um, so here we have the displacement variable on the x-axis, the uh, highway variable, I guess, on the y-axis. Um, and we're using a shape for the, uh, S, uh, the cylinders variable, S-I-L, S-Y-L. And then for color, they're using the C-T-Y variable. And so now we can see how, like, um, in, um, 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 my window is too short. Um, you can see how in, in line seven, where we're setting the legend text color, that's affecting the shape guide, right? Which is the one we have for um, uh, the factor CIL, right? So we set the aesthetic here um, at the beginning, and later on with the guides function, we say like, okay, the shape, um, um, legend, we want it to have red text. Then for the color um, aesthetic, which we mapped to CTY, 
you want another box to be read. Right? So that's what we see there. Um, now, that's something you can do inside of like the guides function. But um, let me replace for the actual full code chunk that I have. And so this example here shows how you can also use the theme function to uh, make changes that, that apply to all guides. So for example, we can change the title position um, um, to make it on the left side instead of the top, which is the default. And then um, we can also change um, um, uh, the um, angle for the text as well as the justification for it. So let me let me just run this version without doing line 14. Um, so it would just say a title position left will appear on the left side, but like we could also then rotate around by 90 degrees um, and have it um, um, horizontally justified by 0.5. Um, so that's how you get that version. So these are, um, I think this is probably gonna be something we're all gonna have to learn really well because um, um, something we end up doing a lot for our papers, right, is we make these graphs, but we wanna make sure that the legend is not taking too much space, that it's actually readable, et cetera. Um, so we're probably gonna um, end up using these functions quite a bit. Um, so that's a pretty big change, uh, or I mean, maybe something we need to learn and get used to using. Okay, something else they did was, um, so this example was it's pretty, uh, um, um, it's funny in, in, in some ways. Um, so something they did was, uh, now their functions are a bit more aware of the different types of, um, of uh, variables that you might have, um, particularly for discrete variables, how you wanna deal with them. So let's say we have a plot here where we have, we're using the scale alpha manual and then setting the, the, the values of, of alpha. Um, and we want um, them to be 0.5 and one. Um, and so next we can say like, okay, uh, for, um, 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 for color, we're gonna map it to points as well as alpha, we're gonna map it to points. Um, if you do that, you get this version over here. Um, 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 now, something you can add then is say like, let's add a little line. Um, this line is gonna be the smoother line from the linear regression. Uh, and then we're also gonna say like, um, that the color is line and the alpha is line. If we do that, we end up with this quite interesting version where we have the line, um, but now you can see here, there's some details that are maybe hard to miss. The points here has the actual full circle. Uh, the line has a full line of it for color. Um, and then the alpha is, uh, is shown uh, separately. Um, and so something that maybe happened before is you could get a little dot there too, right? Or stuff like that. So it just looks a little bit cleaner. Um, 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 so, um, and so, they show here like how it looked in the past. Um, and so you could use the show legend argument um, and set it to true. Um, um, and so this was the default behavior in the past. Um, and if you do that now, you see, um, let me clear my annotations. Um, we can see here like how uh, there's a red dot that wasn't there before on the new version, um, as well as a dot here on the line and then a line over here on the points. So it just looks a little bit messier um, than what you can get now with the new version. Um, so in the past, maybe we're like, okay, I mean, that's it. We couldn't, it was maybe challenging to 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 deal with it. Now you can in, in, in some ways. Um, 
And so uh, um, uh, the next thing is um, positioning of legends. Um, so they made it a lot easier to move them around than it was before. Um, and so let me copy this code over here. So let's just say we have our basic graph over here. Um, um, let me print it. So we have displacement against highway. Um, we added a bunch of stuff. Um, legends that so we have um, an alpha one for, for uh, S -S -Y -L. Um, a color bar for a CTY, a shape for a drive, and then size of the point for the year, right? So we added a lot of mappings here to, to, this, um, to this plot. Um, but like, as you can see, like there's too many legends, it's hard to see all of them. So now we can, um, uh, we can use things uh, inside the guy color bar, guy legend functions. There's an argument called position. There, there we can say like, okay, we want our, um, our color bar, uh, which right now appears on the right. We want it to be on the bottom. So that will be below the plot. Uh, we want the size one, which is year, um, to now be shown on the top. Um, um, and so let's, let me do that version. Um, and so we do that now. Um, now we can see that we have the, um, the size mapping on the top um, and the color mapping on legend on the bottom. All of that looks pretty nice right now. The plot doesn't look so crowded. Um, but um, something you can do also is you can use the position inside a value. If we do that, um, and so we'll do that for the alpha uh, legend, now it appears completely in the middle. Um, um, that's maybe along the lines of changes that, uh, yes, it can enable nice plots. Let's say you wanted to actually put it inside, um, um, but on, it is, uh, we're trying to annotate, sorry. Uh, uh, but in this part, right? So you'll, you'll need to use a few more arguments to not only say, yes, I want it inside, but I want it on, let's say, like that top right corner. Um, 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 but something you can do, again, just like we said before, is besides specifying things individually for each um, legend under the guides function, you can also use theme. Um, so in this case, we're going to put um, a legend position to be on, on the left side. Um, and so what this did is that move actually the DRY, the, the, sorry, the drive variable shape uh, legend. So by default, it was all on the right. Um, and now we said like, hey, we want everything to be on the left. Um, so let, let me showcase this to you, how it would work. So I want to run lines um, um, 28 and 29. Plus just uh, line 35, right? So uh, that move everything to the left. But um, since we specified exactly where we want the color, size, and alpha legends, at that point, even though we are specifying theme, the guys, um, the, the guys um, value there, they take priority over the theme once. Uh, cool. Um, so once we did that, right, we just saw that that inside one, we're like not too happy about it. And so um, something you can do is then on the theme, you can say like legend position, right? So um, that was the argument we're using over here, legend position um, in line 35. Now it can be even more specific and say, we want it inside and inside is gonna mean uh, relatively on the plot on the 70% on the X axis and the 70% on the Y axis. Um, and so that's how like you can then move it a bit a little bit further top to the top right. You would need to like play around with more or with it to then finally get it on the on the top right corner. Um, um, similar to to that, now you can also specify the justification of the of the legend title. 
um, 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 and so um, in this version over here, we are additionally using under the theme argument. We're specifying actually the title of it, this plot align title that we see over here. But something else what we're doing is we're setting the margin. Um, we're then saying the justification for the top side will be left. For the left, it'll be top. For the bottom, it'll be right. For the inside, it'll be like um, the maximum one, one. Um, um, and so if you do all of this, you actually get this plot on the uh, that we see below. And so as an example, let's just dive in a bit more into um, 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 uh, I think the easiest the easiest case here is the bottom one. Um, so bottom said uh, we wanted we want it to be justified on the right side. Um, and if we look at it now, in contrast to the version that um, we had before or here, where displacement, uh, the, the color bar here is in the middle. Now we said like we want to justify it to such that it's on the right side. Um, so that's what that was done. Um, um, that's what was done over here, uh, bottom right. So, um, you know, just need to, there's a lot of uh, words that are being reused, right? Like for example, left and left, top and top, et cetera. Um, so just need to like, um, remember that the argument is specifying um, what you're controlling. Um, the value that you give it is like what you, uh, where you want it to be. Um, so that's just a bit of, um, to me, it feels a bit like learning how to read math, right? Like learning how to read parentheses. Um, um, so it's a bit like that. Um, so actually, to get it on the top right corner, this inside, that was actually pretty useful here. You just do legend justification inside, one, one. And something that I like about this, um, so let me just uh, run that version. Um, I'll modify a bit the code. So I'm only going to do that. Um, something that's nice about that is like I'll I'll show cases with a zoom version. So at this point, I have a pretty uh, wide rectangle. Let me make it like taller. It stays there on like one one. Whereas if I had used um, uh, um, these arguments. So let's say I wanted in one one. Actually, yeah, one point seven. Um, let me look at the zoom version of the plot. Um, so on this white format. Since I said I wanted it to start on the x-axis at one, so that means like the hundred percent is always on the right side, right? Um, um, but let's try to make showcase this. If I make it super tall now, you can see that now it's actually not aligned at the top um, uh, section, and that's because I said like on the y-axis I wanted it to start at the seventy percent, um, and so. This is like um, when you use legend position dot inside, um, that can break, and well, it's all relative, I guess, to how big is your actual plotting area, right? Uh, whereas the other version, the justification, that tries to do it for you. Um, so that was pretty nice. I'll just showcase that again. Um, how in this version, it looks pretty well. Uh, I'll make it like super wide, still looks pretty well. If I make it like tall, still, you know, matches that location. So I think this, for me, this was a big uh, headache back, back in the day. Um, and so maybe I didn't know about um, how to control this in previous versions of ggplot. 
but now that I know how to do it in version 3.5.0, uh, that's what I'll be doing. Hmm. So um, uh, if you want to even get deeper into, into legends, there's a whole set of arguments that start with legend.spacing for X or Y. Um, and uh, they made a little um, diagram here for us to understand what are all the different um, uh, arguments actually for controlling all the different spaces. So there's the legend box spacing, which is like the distance between the plot or the legend area starts. It's for example, this like margin beam, I guess for bottom under the title, which is how much space there's between the title and the first um, keys and legends, keys and labels. Sorry. Um, there's also like you can control the space between each key and each label um, between rows, sorry, between um, different guides that you might have. Um, so you can control a lot of things. And so there's an example over here where they're saying like, okay, uh, we want to have uh, no space on the legend text. So like between the key and the label, there's no space. There's actually no space right there. But then they say like um, the space between the title, which is class, and the first ones, we want to have quite a bit of space there. That's why they said B equals to 20. That's what we see over here. Um, it's B for bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. B over here. Uh -huh. How do you determine the units? For example, 20, 10. So these are like point units. You need oh, like. Point you, units. Yeah. 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 There's a way of, like, there's point units, there's also, like, centimeters, so you could, like, um, you could do the math and convert between one and the other. Um, do you but, have to specify what, what you want to use? Um, so here they specify that uh, unit there, what type of unit you want. Um, probably for, I don't know, for these uh, margins, if you can specify the, the type of unit. Maybe you can. Um, uh, because uh, like from what we saw last week is that they're trying to make make it easier for people to be able to use different types of units mm -hmm. um, instead of trying to remember when like ggplot expects one type of unit versus another. Um, so there's probably like a units argument, um, uh, but I haven't checked that. Um, so you can do a lot of things with that. Um, and... Uh, uh, this is an example how if you use the theme function, this just applies to every every um, every single guy that you might have. Um, so um, 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 maybe something that is they say that it's experimental. So they're saying like, well, this could have bugs. Maybe it's not doing exactly what you want it to do. Is um, you can actually stretch. And so if you set the leak key height, legend key height to null, um, what that does, so let me see, I need to copy the P, the current plot that we're using. Oh, that's still the same one. Um, uh, oh no, sorry, we just made it. Uh, new one. So if you set that to the, the height to null, what this does is, uh, and I'll showcase it in the zoom version. So here I have a tall version. We're seeing that like the legends are using everything that we have on the y-axis, all the space. If I make it wide, it still uses the, everything we have on the, on the y-axis. Um, so then there, like the legend is, is changing in size, depending how much space there is. Um, and so that can be nice. And like here, this example just says like, okay, like the color bar, we're going to move it to the left. At that point, both of them are stretching the full width of the y-axis. But they try to highlight it actually doesn't exactly match, right? And so um, um, for this ends and for that ends, it's not exactly the same location on the y-axis. I mean, if you drew like a better line, you might be able to see it. And that's because it's using all the y axis space that it has, but you need to remember that there's a ton of other things here, right? There's like the title that like 
even though there's no title written, there's like stuff there, there's space for the title, there's space for other things. Um, and so this might be a bit um, finicky, I guess, in terms of what you expect versus what you get. Um, but it's, you know, that's why they're calling it experimental. Um, and they showcase how like maybe this can break a bit. So for example, they add now um, color for um, a field color for the model variable. The model variable has a ton of different values. And so because they're using this stretch on the y-axis, um, since now we have a ton of legends, there's not enough space for the for the size guide. Um, and so now like the, the points of the size, they're, they're overlapping with each other. And so that like broke that guide. Um, so you need, you need to be careful when you're using that, that stretching argument. Um, Boom. Um, so something else that uh, I thought was interesting is there, there's a new function called guide custom, or maybe, I mean, I don't know if it's exactly new, but um, they're introducing it here. Um, um, guide custom allows you to actually to have, in this case, they, they made a shape using the grid package. Um, it allows you to to pass any drop object, so graphical objects. Um, so there's a way, for example, of reading a PNG file and making a graphical object. Um, that's kind of what we do for a lot of our uh, spatial transatomic plots. Uh, and so you could put any graphical object there as, as your guide. So it's a way of if you want to add your logo type of thing. Um, or if you're like doing a spatial transatomics, maybe you want to plot um the data without the um, image in the background and then like the histology image of in the background but then like show a little version of it here on the bottom right um so stuff like that could be interesting um to play around with um something else something else that they're showcasing is how um in previous versions of ggplot2 if the legend titles were wider than the legends then it was always left aligned uh, but now you can actually say like, hey, I want to justify it like left or right or whatever. And so this is an example where they have two long titles and one of them they're saying like, like I want it to be right justified, the other one want it left justified. So um, that's just something extra there. So that, that was it for the Legends uh, blog post. Um, let's now move on to the Axis one. Um, so... Um, um, just like we saw that there's all these like guide uh, functions for um, uh, like the color bar, et cetera, there's now also a function or, or I mean, or they're explaining to us the function guide axis. Um, um, and so this function is pretty, um, I guess, similar to the other ones, but something that like we are, we are all going to love as this change that they added which is um, there's a minor ticks argument. And now you can set it to true. So I'll just show you the version um, where it's all um, it's false. Um, so <coughs> let's, you know, with, with our studio's history, we can see the difference between them, right? Do you spot the visual difference? Can you raise your hand once you've spotted the visual difference? Mm -hmm. oh. Right. You, you, you did. Right. Um, and so that's pretty nice uh, to have, just to make it a bit like um, easier to see the minor ticks, right? Because these minor ticks on this default theme are like white lines. Um, but sometimes in some projectors or um, some screens, Maybe they don't. Maybe they're really hard to see. And so having the like the black uh, little tick here um, maybe makes it a little bit easier to see in those cases uh, to spot the minor ticks. Um, and so then they go on to explain like, well, actually, not only can you add them, now you can do a lot of things to them. So um, the frequency of them is specified by the minor breaks argument, um, and you can use the scales package to say like, hey. I want, for example, to have 
uh, minor breaks every 0.2 uh, values of my x-axis. And so that's what they do over here, where we have two and three, and between two and three, there's four minor ticks. Every, them, every one of them specified every 0.2 distances away. Um, and so this is something that, um, for example, I was asking Diana to make a plot recently, where I was like, hey, can you add more minor ticks? Um, um, actually, it was for a legend, but um, um, uh, but um, I, died, I died on a legend. Anyways, um, this is how you can control the frequency of the ticks with, with the minor breaks argument, and in this case, to the scale x continuous function. Something else you can do is on the theme side of things, you can say like, okay, I want my ticks length to be five points. Um, so the, that's for the major ticks. Then I want my minor ones to be relatively uh, on a relative size of just half the size as the, as the major ones. Then I also want my ticks that are on the x-axis um, um, uh, on the bottom side of the x-axis. I want them to be red, uh, color red. Then I want all my um, axis, my ticks on the y-axis, so that's both major and minor. I want both of them to be blues. Um, 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 so that's how you can you know, control all these little colors for all the, all the ticks if you want to. Um, um, I mean, I think this is cool. I, it's um, besides controlling the frequency of the ticks, of the ticks, um, um, and maybe the sizes of them. I'm not sure where I would imagine, where I would find it useful to control the color as much, unless you're trying to make like a, you know, a theme uh, that uses other colors. You know, you're aiming for getting your plot on the BBC or, or some other like news website. <laughs> Um, like, I mean, we've talked about the BBC package in the past. Um, um, BB, I think it's BB plot. Um, okay. Um, now here they're like, well, uh, they, they don't want to call this like a new improvement because I don't know if you, any of you remember, but all of this, this, this next change has been part of base R since the beginning, really. Um, and so the thing they're doing here is like, you can use a now a cap argument to say like, hey, I only want to show the, um, the, um, the, um, the line for the axis between the first major tick and the last major tick. Um, and so this is a, it looks a bit weird, like I <laughs> see your face, mm -hmm. right? Um, this looks a bit weird for a ggplot2 plot. Is one of the things ggplot2 did was like make sure that you have ticks all the way, right? Um, and the, the the you know the line looks um, uh, the same. Um, and so, uh, uh, I mean, it's um, it's something that they enabled now, right? Um, um, now, something a bit maybe more useful than that is actually logarithmic axis. Um, so here they have some logarithmic data, and we're, we're going to use this guide axis log ticks um, um, function. Um, and so we're using that in, say, inside of the scale y continuous to specify how we want that to be. Um, as, um, and then you can also use the name just axis log ticks if you want to um, instead, of, instead of specifying some other things. And so here we see this on the y where um, we have um, data that is on a logarithmic scale. And uh, what this is showing now is uh, minor and major ticks um, or units before they're transformed on the, on the, um, on, onto the log scale, right? So um, um, this is something that is, I think, quite useful because um, sometimes, I mean, when you plot things on the log scale, right, it's pretty easy to understand, for example, um, a value over here, because you're like, okay, I see the value uh, on, on, um, uh, on the label for that major tick, right? Um, and also like a point over here, where I can also see the value. 
But like, what if it's like over there, right? Mm. Now you have to do a bit of mental gymnastics and be like, okay, the space between, um, let me clear my drawings, um, space between here and the next major tick is, um, actually, let me, let me do it as a simple example. Let's look at, um, at this point over there, right? So you can see, okay, that's where it lands on the y-axis. We only have these two major ticks. We would need to do some mental gymnastics to like try to figure out like um, uh, what was the actual value that it corresponded to, and so now having those ticks on um, that are on the natural scale before they get transformed into the log scale um, can help us understand well what is the value that we're looking at, right? Um, um, do you mean that there in the major tick is the 0 0.5? Um, What's yeah, your, like your 0.5, yeah. Just to, to have it yeah. clear. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure because um, um, I would expect a few more ticks of that in that case. Uh, but I think. Like the bigger minor tick should be like 0 0.55, which is halfway between to figure out the middle half scale. or something like this because you the major tick. Yeah, I think the the mm -hmm. each of the ticks is going on a linear scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but then then you have like four here, mm -hmm. right? Oh, okay. oh, it's a different number. Okay, that's not intuitive. And then you have mm -hmm. three there. So that's why I'm a bit confused. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because uh, I think it's 0 0.5. 4, 3, 2, and then 0. 0.1, right? Oh, okay. That's right. yeah, because it's not zero. You're right. Um, yeah, so let's let's just draw it. Um, so this is ah, um, this is 0. 0.23. Uh, so it's because there's an or five, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was the odd number thing that was throwing me off. And then, but they still used the bigger size for the line, which to me seems like it should be halfway. But since it's odd, there is no halfway. Yeah, yeah. not confusing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. Then six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. Yeah, cool. All right. Thank you. Um, now there's scenarios here. Like, what happens? If you have the zeros and like. Um, uh, they talk a little bit more about it in the blog post about what it does in that scenario. Mm -hmm. um, oh. um, May I ask you another question? Uh, is the log 10 the only available logarithm no. scale? No, they have, they have more. Okay. Um, this is one they're showcasing. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, here, for example, we're saying like, hey, uh, you specify a negative length for the unit, now your ticks are actually inside instead of outside. And uh, they're just showcasing this example because it was something you could do with a previous function called annotation log ticks. Um, uh, but now they're like kind of moving away from that. Um, and so, um, but if you want to reproduce exact behavior you had in those plots, this is how you would do it with setting a negative length. Um, Something they talk about though don't showcase is this guide axis tag function. Um, and um, uh, they don't talk about it on the blog post, but you can see here a little example where you could have multiple, um, let's say, axes um, for the x axis in this scenario. Um, and so I guess this could be. The, this could power the scenario where you want to plot like, like two variables on the x-axis against a single variable on the y-axis. Um, but then they have, um, they're talking about different, um, your two variables on the x-axis have different uh, ranges of values. I just want to show them on the same plot. But that's kind of like where you get into the area of maybe not the best type of graphics um, because it, it can be quite hard and confusing to read those plots. Um, um, so th that's like here they're saying like, well, we enabled it, but as far um, um, 
um, like here they say, like, there's no compelling case to use it for now <laughs> that they can think of, right? But maybe when uh, access extensions arrive, um, um, that could be a useful scenario. Um, oh. Now, something that they also added is um, when you're doing a facet grid, right? Um, now you can control. So let me copy this. Um, and I'll just edit it. So, mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Um, so um, you use facet grid by default. You get a version like this, right? Or you have um, only the axis showing, in this case, on the very far left for the y axis, and only on the bottom um, side for the x axis. Uh, but now you can, there's an axis argument now for the facet grid function. Um, and here, for example, we can say, like, hey, we want uh, um, to show the y-axis on all of them. And that's how you get this version over there. Um, and it's, um, um, so there could be some other scenarios. Let's say you're, you're plotting something that is like really big. And so um, if I go to the previous version, let's say you're plot, plotting something really big, super like uh, wide. And now you're like so far away over here on the right side that is like it takes you a while to like look what was the value all the very all the way on the very far left. So you're making a plot like that, um, then uh, you might want to have the actual like y-axis um, labels everywhere, right? That way your eyes don't have to travel such a huge distance to see the values. You're you're of course like losing space though because you you now need more space. Um, um, uh, but now, I mean, it's pretty easy to control that. So another example here is they have like, they want to show all of the axes, but only show the labels for Y. Um, and so this is, you want to see the actual ticks, right? So now we see the ticks here on the X axis, these black little things, but without actually seeing the values. So it just reminds you of like, um, uh, it reminds your eyes of like, okay, um, um, this was a major tick. Now you can look back and be like, okay, which is the value for for the level the label for the um, for the second major tick, and that was three. Um, so that can be a bit useful again if you're using a monitor or um, a projector for um, the the white lines don't show as well. Um, uh, so I mean, I like that um, having the axis on all. Um, I will probably use that version. So just um, 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 now you don't specify like um, um, so this this version is like now saying like okay we want everything on both x and y. Uh, but if you don't specify how to control for you on the labels, now you're getting the labels everywhere, right? Um, uh, so there's probably a way of saying like, I want I want the ticks everywhere, but I only want to show the labels on the far left and the bottom. Um, cool. So uh, that's basically it. The next blog post that they're going to talk about is uh, the the polar coordinate system and access for it. Um, right now, all these plots are on the Cartesian uh, system. Um, but you could also have plots on polar coordinate systems. Mm -hmm. So um, there's going to be more um, that, uh, blog posts. You always, if you want to find them, um, all of these blog posts that are related to uh, version 3.5.0 have a label at the top called um, gplot2-3-5-0. That's where you can see like all the related blog posts. 
And I guess, uh, you know, we're lucky they just added a new one right now, <laughs> which is a polar coordinate system. Uh, so we look at it quickly. Uh, uh, I guess you can see different ways of um, um, whether you want to have the gray background um, like expand completely to the full square, just a little bit, or like not show it at all, kind of like a pie chart. Um, um, donuts, okay. Some people like that because um, 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 sometimes if you're trying to show data on the very on the very center of things, it can be really hard to see because at that point everything is pretty uh, crammed up. So you might want to add some extra space to it. That's I guess that donut version. Um, um, yeah. I want to control axis. I want to color them. Um, some lines you might want to. All right, looks pretty interesting. Um, uh, so um, you know those plots remind me of uh, papers like this when people used to uh, show the. Uh, the complete um, genome of different organisms. So this is the 1994 paper um, showing the complete genome sequence for E. coli, which is around four, um, four megabases or four million base pairs. Um, and so it was, it, was, it was very common in genomics to make these type of plots where you're trying to show how things look across base pairs and you're trying to show different tracks uh, for example, where the genes are, um, like the GC content, et cetera. Um, and so nowadays, you don't see this type of plot much anymore on on, um, on genomics papers. But this is how they, they looked a lot. Um, and I know this one because my, my dad is part of the authors. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Um, yeah, so that's it for today. Um, enjoy uh, reading more about ggplot2. Um, and um, since I didn't prepare the polar one, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about it much right now. I would need to read it more carefully. OK, um, see you around.